Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. The Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found those who were selling oxen and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting there. And making a whip out of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. And he told those who sold the pigeons, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of trade. His disciples remembered what what was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. So the Jews said to him, What sign do you show us for doing these things? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking about the temple of his body. When therefore he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, And they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. We continue with our next hymn, hymn number 850. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is taken from our gospel lesson 
the Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter, as read a few moments ago, Dear Fellow Redeemed in Christ. You know, sometimes I'm amazed at how rude people can be to other people. You know, if you're in the grocery store, sometimes you hear some people yelling, maybe a, a family having some sort of conflict with one another. They're yelling almost at the top of their lungs and everybody's turning and looking. Maybe you're out on the, the softball field or you're, uh, you're at work and you hear language that does not even belong in the locker room. Generally speaking, we as a people like decorum, we like quietness, we like things to be calm. Sometimes, though, what appears to be totally inappropriate, what appears to be rude, may just simply be an outburst of strong conviction. Someone sees a miscarriage of justice or something wrong going on, and they just can't hold it in any longer. they got to let it out. And so they let it out. In our text, our gospel reading for today, we see such an occasion. You see, Jesus just could not let this one go. He had to do something. The people had turned his father's house into a marketplace where dishonesty and cheating were the norm. The people had no reverence for the sacred things of God. It was as if God did not matter. It was as if God did not exist. Very clearly, God outlined what his temple should be and how his people should conduct themselves within the temple confines. The glory of the presence of God in the temple is described in the Old Testament book of Ezekiel. The temple was a place where God, in a very real way, came to meet his people. It was a place where sacrifices were offered up for sins. The blood of sacrificed animals was poured out onto the altar and onto the atonement cover of the ark. There, forgiveness of sins was dispensed. And God required a high and holy piety of his people when they came into his presence. But you see, like many things in life, over the years, what was high and holy denigrated into a crass commercial venture. The sacrifices were that. The sacrifices were required, but the whole matter of procuring and paying for these sacrifices crept into the temple precincts, inevitably pushing God further and further away. Thoughts of sin, forgiveness, and prayer were replaced with the noise and the smell of animals and the ever-present hawking of money changers. What made matters worse was that buyers, sellers, and money changers used this situation to their advantage, extorting money from well-intended people of God who came to offer the required sacrifices. They proved that religion was good business. They could make the sacrifices more convenient for the people and make good money at it too. But the problem was, it was corrupt. In all of this, the people forgot that they were in the presence of God. And so when Jesus came into his temple, a journey that every Jew made during the time of the Passover, he was offended by what had become of his father's house. Making a whip of cords, Jesus begins to chase out all of the animals and the people. Get these out of here, he says. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? You know, I'm amazed every time I read this text because, because it shows a, 
a different side of Jesus. A side that maybe many of us don't usually experience or don't usually think of. Most pictures have Jesus as a loving and gentle Savior, and he is, I can assure you of that. But at times, Jesus can get angry. And what makes him most angry is sin. As you can, as you can probably imagine, Jesus' actions did not go over too well for those who were profiting from all that was going on. In fact, they were so mad at Jesus that they began to question his authority. Show us, they said, what miraculous sign can you do to prove your authority to do all of this? What? Show us what you, what miraculous sign you can give. In other words, they were saying, Jesus, who do you think you are? Who gave you the right to barge in here and stop us? Oh, Jesus would give them a sign of his authority. However, it wouldn't come until some three years later. But believe me, that sign would come. In fact, the sign that Jesus gives is the greatest of all messianic miracles. It would be a sign so unbelievable that even the greatest novelist wouldn't dare dream of it. Destroy this temple, Jesus said, and I will raise it again in three days. That would be the sign. Upon hearing this, the Jews were flabbergasted. What? You would build this temple in three days? Have you lost your mind, Jesus? It has taken 46 years to build this temple, and you're going to destroy it and then raise it up again in three days? Now, I've got to admit, they had a point. To tear down a building the size of the temple and then to build it up again in a short span of three days, it's an impossible undertaking. It would be like saying that I was going to destroy our magnificent building here, and then by myself build it up in a day or two. It's just not possible. But there was a caveat to Jesus' words. You see, Jesus was not talking about the physical structure of the temple. He was talking about his own body. He was talking about his death and resurrection. Destroy this temple, and I will raise it again in three days. So what? So he was talking about his body. What does that have to do with us today in 2018? Well, before we relegate this text to a status of irrelevance, let's consider a few things. At the heart of this text is the fact that these money changers had no respect for God's house of worship. They went so far as to treat the sacred things as if these things really didn't matter. Now what about us? Think about that for a moment. What about us? How do we treat the sacred things of God? You know, this really falls in the realm of the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does this mean? We should fear and love God that we do not despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. That should be an easy one for us to follow. How many of us can honestly say that we've despised the preaching of God's word lately? 
probably not many of us gathered here, or at least many of us who gather here regularly. But I think we need to examine what this text really means, what this commandment really means. The Catechism says that there are actually three ways that we can despise preaching and his word. The first is when we do not attend public worship at all. The second is when we do not use the word and the sacraments. And the third is when we are negligent and careless in the use of the word and the sacraments. So what this means is that we sin against this commandment by, one, not coming to church, or two, by coming but not fully investing our attention into what God is doing here. How many of us can actually say that after a long, exhausting, and stressful week, where we are running here and there with the kids, or the boss has been riding us hard at work, that we wake up on Sunday morning gladly desiring to come to church, especially when there's a snowstorm looming out there. More times than not, don't we curse our alarm clock when it goes off on Sunday morning, if it goes off at all. <coughs> or maybe we're faithful in coming to church, but we're distracted. We're distracted by who is and who is not here on Sunday morning. And we may even miss the message entirely. The fact of the matter is that when it comes to the third commandment and the sacred things of God, you and I, all of us, must plead guilty as charged. But there's good news. There's good news in the fact that Jesus came to die for all those times we've despised preaching in his word. Jesus came to die for all those times we have sinned against the third commandment. For all those times when we slept in, or even desired to sleep in. He died for all those times when we drug ourselves out of bed, but then let our minds wander during the sermon, or carelessly, as we carelessly approached the Lord's altar for communion. He died for all those times when we did not quite live up to the calling, our calling, as followers of Jesus Christ. Jesus died. And three days later, he rose again. He rose again so that our sins, so that our failures, would not count against us. He died so that all of our sins, even those sins against the third commandment, might be placed upon his shoulders and they might, too, die and be buried with him. He died and rose again so that we might live with him forever. The destruction of the physical temple did happen. It happened in 70 AD. But, the great reformer Martin Luther writes, God has built a greater and more glorious one in its place in Christ, where Christ is present with, his, with us in his word and sacrament. This is also the true Zion. What a comfort it is to know that when you come to the Lord's house, when you participate in the divine service, you are truly in the presence of God. What a comfort it is to know that here in this place, 
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ comes to you in order that he might give to you life, forgiveness, and salvation in his name. May we never neglect the things of God, but according to that new person, may we always hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our service continues now as we with one voice make confession of our Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed can be found on the back cover of your hymnal. If you go to the back cover and open it up, you'll see the Nicene Creed. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our service continues now with the gathering of our tithes and our offerings, and also the sharing of peace. If there's someone sitting next to you that you do not know, please welcome them to the Lord's house.